Well, it's the morning after the night before in Turin and what a night it was. Juventus nil, Arsenal woman four. Um, an emphatic few days it has been uh, for Rene Slagers as interim manager beating Brighton 5-0 and then following it up with an impressive away win uh, here in Turin. Well, not in Turin, in fact, in Biella. It's been some journey for those Arsenal fans. Um, I've got Farah from the Arsenal Women Supporters Club alongside me and we've got Laguna fanzine Susie Lysett who was on photography duty yesterday. Farah, we'll start with you because I feel like the result result matched the fans performance yesterday what an effort from those 200 to get out here yeah it was incredible and I mean to be fair I don't really expect anything less we knew we were going to have close to you know two 250 uh, we sold just over 200 tickets in the end um, and combining with Arsenal Italia as well it just mm. it just shaped up to be an incredible atmosphere and that started from during the day to the stadium so yeah it was probably one of our best away European games um, and yeah, I think people are still really buzzing about it. So yeah, no, it's great. Mm. Susie, you've stayed in Biella, you and Farah um, rooming together. What's that experience been like sort of coming here into Turin early yesterday morning? I mean, I feel like everyone's put a shift in the last couple of days and, and we've been rewarded. No, indeed, like a 3 a.m. start yesterday to, to get up and get the flight and then get the trains, multiple trains mm. into Biella. Um, no, but I mean, at the end, end of the day, like it was an amazing experience, kind of regardless of the of the result of the, you want the result, you want to win, obviously, but um, when you're, you can hear the fans and I had the privilege of where I was on the pitch, sort of sitting between the fan bases. So I could hear that kind of battle between how loud, um, how, how loud the Juventus fans, fans were and then for Arsenal as well. Um, yeah, like Farrah just said, we always bring plenty of numbers away. So being pitch side for that is quite cool being in the middle and getting to experience it. And Farrah, look, before we get into the game, you had a, a great view of Rene Slagers and the team leaving on the coach. And, yeah. and she was giving it, she giving it large a few celebrations. Yeah, I mean, with away games, we, um, we get... We get the opportunity because there's a smaller bunch of us to really kind of show our appreciation after the game and mm. there was this buzz in the air and everyone's like let's go to the to the coach we waited um, a little bit we had the flags out and yeah the coach came came by and we were all cheering and you just see Renee at the front just cheering and shouting and clapping and it was just so amazing to see she looked she looked yeah I think she really appreciated it but I think just her being so lively with us as well mm. um yeah it was a great moment and i think we all enjoyed that yeah she seems to have really settled now susie and i think whether that's a consequence of the wins or whether it's actually a factor behind them in terms of her settling in she's obviously had the international break and then went away to manchester united but the last couple of results i mean whether arsenal are considering her whether she wants it you know we're not totally sure but from a fan's point of view do you feel like the fan base there's a few more maybe in favor of her taking it permanently I mean, I'd say yes, you know, if, if we're winning, then the fans are going to be happy. It's always going to be the case. And the way that we're winning uh, relatively emphatically at the moment, and every opponent's different, so it may not continue, we'll see. But I think after three pretty good, solid performances, even with a draw versus United, mm. um, I think that that really establishes kind of that positivity in the fan base. And at, this, at the end of the day, like that energy, the team will feed off it too. So when you have positivity in the fan base, you have positivity in the team and vice mm. versa. So... Um, yeah, uh, the fact that Renee seems to be uh, presiding over that and kind of leading the team in the right direction, the fans are going to be happy. Yeah, I mean, hearing Renee Slagans of Red and White Army, I mean, that, yeah. that must have been some feeling for her, actually, as interim manager for the fans to, to throw their weight behind her. And, and that must be really important for you, Farah, at the moment, even there's been a lot of transition at Arsenal, obviously some difficult times after some, some good years and some really good times under Jonas Seidabal, we can't forget. But how challenging has that been to sort of keep the faith, keep throwing your weight behind whoever's in charge? Yeah, I think, you know, our jobs, um, you know, as, as fans and such a sort of the community that we are, we have to sort of lead by example. And we, when we know the the, fa um, the players are having a bit of a tough time, you can visibly see it. Um, it's up to us to just keep going harder and louder and making sure that they know that that, that support's there, even though we know there's challenging times behind the scenes. Um, so that's just super important. And then to... You know, to see Renee come in, um, she came in at such a challenging time, so much pressure, so many eyes on her and, and she just seems like she's come in very quietly confident, um, kind of seems to just not having to change too much, but just sort of give them a little bit more freedom. And yeah, it's just, I think, you know, the whole kind of culture seems to, yeah. just seems to 
been shifted. So, and the girls are playing with a bit of a smile now, which is really lovely to see. They absolutely are. Well, looking back on the game, it was uh, quite an even start. Um, Juventus came up with the blocks quite well in front of their home fans. A few early saves for Van Domsela where maybe their strikers could have been a little more clinical. And it was quite an even first half. But that goal for Frieda Marnham, I don't know if either of you have seen the video back yet, but it's all about the pass from Caitlin Ford. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, I obviously having the privilege of being pitch side to see this uh, Frida celebrated right in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> so I That will be the that. thumbnail for this, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, in case people are wondering where that shot is. <laughs> no, so actually seeing that, and as you say, it was a very even first half. You can always tell it, particularly as a photographer, like sat a, on the attacking end, you can always tell when mm. uh, the play is a little bit more at the other end, for example, and you can see it's quite an even balance. Um, but no, Frida's goal and that setup, that was what the team needed. I think it was a good way to ignite the energy because it was quite evenly balanced second half sort of uh, progressed a little bit which is good in case you're wondering about the noise we are in Turin and uh, car horns well they are they're quite popular here and we're, we're in a park and uh, next to a road opposite we've had a lovely day actually going around the river in Turin and um, you guys have stayed in Biella other people have stayed in Milan people have come from all over the place I mean it's not been an easy one to get to and, and I think the the team and the manager have really appreciated that in a way yeah i think um i mean I, th I think the way they celebrated with us at the end i think just shows the sort of the appreciation i mean they've always had that they've always kind mm. of shown us that um but this is what arsenal fans do you know they'll find a way to to get there and we always joke like even if they had a game at the north pole i'm sure you'll have <laughs> a few selfish. gooners there um but people make it happen and i think our away numbers have just increased so much this season um especially coming away from uh, com coming to europe and i think because everyone we've built very a, t a tight community now and people are you know they're not really they can come out on their own and they'll know people mm. and and yeah i think you know we've tried to really kind of build that around the supporters club and making sure that you know we then address it to the wider fan base so you can just buy that ticket and get on a flight and there will be gooners here when you get here so i think that helps a lot of people we've had so many first timers um yeah. and they just they've got the bug now and they want to come back so um no it's been great yeah and many will be braving the cold uh, in norway yeah. next month but what's been really nice for me actually is meeting up some of the italian gooners yesterday and they've seen Arsenal men lose to Inter Milan here, draw to Atalanta and now the women. The women have finally got them a win of the Champions League and um, look, the second half again quite tight for a while. Um, the substitutions, I feel like that's been a real difference for me between Rene and Jonas Eideval in that Jonas was making a lot of changes to his starting lineups, whereas Rene has gone for continuity. But to manage that, she's looked to, to rotate in the game and get some minutes into different players. The subs were key yesterday, two goals and an assist coming from them, starting with Stina and then Mariona Caldente. Yeah, no, 100%. And I think that as well, you do have to kind of balance that with the fact that they were winning by this point too. So you are, you mm. can um, slightly more comfortably bring those subs on. Um, but no, it is a bit of a departure from what we've perhaps seen previously, where it was a very, very consistent start starting lineup and then not too much uh, change in terms of the subs or quite late subs. But each time that we've had those subs uh, recently with, under Rene Slager, it's been more more energy on the pitch, which is it, it's kind of what you need. And as I said earlier, it feeds into the fan base and things too, in terms of the noise that you can bring. So. Uh, yeah, it's really nice to see that as well as see like, you know, these players that do deserve the minutes, they are getting the minutes and, and they're getting the results too. Mm. So yeah, it's really refreshing. Yeah, some good finishing in that second half. Uh, yeah. Mariona and Stina, they go, you know, go for power and um, also yes. Lena, Kyra Cooney Cross coming on and sort of getting assists and then uh, obviously Caitlin Ford finishing the game off. It was one of them where I thought, Farrah, even if we win 1-0, it's still a really good night out away from home. But to put four past a team like Juventus doesn't get a lot better than that. No, not at all. And at the end of uh, the first half, I, I think I said to someone, um, let's just I hope we hold on to this because I genuinely thought the second half um, would be a little bit more competitive. I thought we might concede. Mm. First half was good, but I don't think it was brilliant from us at all. Um, and the second half, they really sort of came into their own. So to, to, to get a clean sheet, four goals, four different goal scorers again is just... And we want to see those numbers go up. It's what we've been struggling. You know, yeah. we can't get that ball at the back of the net. And um, that's how the season started for us, is to see sort of eight goals in the past two games now is honestly is the best thing. <laughs>
yeah, exciting times and um, another big away trip. There's been a few recently. Um, up next, going across to Tottenham, who a lot of people maybe thought would kick on this season and really have gone the other direction. They're one of those sides who are trying to sort of establish a real style of play, a bit like Brighton, if you like. And maybe it's come at a cost. Maybe we will see them revert to a bit more of a low block because obviously they, they beat Arsenal at their place last season. But 3,000 tickets sold in that away end again. Um, I'll start with you, Farah. That is going to be, a, you know, crucial again. And the team, as you say, they've got the momentum behind them. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's big revenge for us that like we have to mm. go we have to go there and, and absolutely um, come out with um, not just the win but we won a big score line um, 3,000 away fans it's going you can only imagine what that atmosphere is going to be like it, um, it's going to be we we'll try you know be very not just loud but our biggest rivals and mm. you know it's going to be um, now I think the expectations is there for us to go and and really kind of push on and really kind of start our season um, and build and continue this momentum as well I think what we struggled with um, cons consistency and losing momentum and just to get into um, a bit of a streak now where we can get some um, points on the board um, and really kind of build ourselves to to what's going to be a really important block for us um, mm. and to end that on, on a high would be would be amazing. Susie just some final thoughts from yourself um, about last night and looking ahead to Spurs as well and um, also just where people can go to check out some of your photos. <laughs> <laughs> well um, no I mean as Farah just said, continuing that momentum, it's all looking incredibly positive, very promising. Um, it will be competitive, I think. It's the North London derby. It's, there's always going to be fight from both sides uh, in that kind of situation. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping, hoping to be pitch side for it. Um, and if I am, you'll be able to find me <laughs> on Instagram or Twitter at Boodle Pimp, which is a very strange, uh, yeah. very strange username there. But. Uh, um, yeah, that's that's where my photos are normally posted. Yeah, we're hoping to and have via the Guna. and via the Guna. We're yeah. hoping to have quite a Guna fanzine presence at Tottenham on mm -hmm. Saturday, which makes me very happy uh, to feel there's going to be a load of us representing the Guna on enemy territory at yeah. the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. So yeah, all of the usual coverage from there, and um, we've got plenty going on from here in Italy. All of the live blog, player ratings, post-match reaction, and free things we learned are up on the website. And obviously, we've had some TikTok content as well. We both noticed Renee sort of kicking the ball around, showing off her skills in the warm-up yesterday which I thought was great to see um, but we're off home tonight we're flying back and then we'll be at Tottenham first thing on Saturday morning um, Farah just summing up on the trip as a whole we've had a few good ones but sometimes you can have a great trip and then the football can let it down but this one I think we've had a bit of everything yeah we can have asked for much more uh, we probably had we had an incredible evening and even this morning just waking up and seeing everyone mm. everyone was just on a high and now we're just pushing on for for Saturday's game and um, yeah it's nice to see Guna smiling again so um, yeah I love to see that yeah absolutely well we will see you on the wrong side of North London on Saturday <laughs>